There are many things in the world to fear. UFOs, demons and ghosts, and evil in general. However, to some living in Key West, Florida, there is a terror worth respect. A haunted object that has been known to attack others and to scare the hell out of them. It has been known to make grown adults run away in supreme terror and has caused children to cry during the darkest hours of the night. It is simply a child's toy. Its name is Robert. Hello, I am author Donald Allen Kirch, welcoming you back to my world of the strange and the bizarre. This is Stranger Than Fiction. <laughs> Forget the world you know. Enter a bizarre dimension where the strange and unusual guide your imagination towards the unimaginable. Life is stranger than fiction in these true stories, where the ordinary is replaced with the extraordinary. Explore strange legends, weird myths, and odd folklore. The facts are laid before you to examine. You're invited to draw your own conclusions on these true stories of the paranormal. In the world of parapsychology, Robert is a rather unassuming doll dressed as a sailor from the late 19th century. With his black button eyes and innocent look, he has plagued the lives of at least three people. In his wake, there are stories of pain, horror, and voodoo. He is like the fictional doll in the motion picture Child's Play. However, unlike Chucky, he is real. One up. Robert's story begins in the year 1896. Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Otto were not known as kind people when it came to the treatment of their servants. Although well established within the Key West community, they were not remembered later in life for their kindness nor their humanity toward others. One of the house servants, after being beat by Mr. Otto, gave their son a rather unusual gift, a doll dressed as a sailor. The young boy who received the gift, Robert Eugene Otto, loved it on first sight. Little did the boy know that his faithful friend was not offered out of kindness or love. The doll was given to Jean as a way of revenge against his parents for their cruelty. The presenter of the gift had been a skilled practitioner in the arts of voodoo. Jean, with the innocence of a child, loved the doll with all his heart, enduring himself with it. He named him Robert. There was never a time that either boy or doll were separated. After a time, the joy of the gift was forgotten. <laughs> Life continued. Strange things started to happen. The autos, as they went to bed, would hear their son talking to the doll, sometimes in a different voice, more high-pitched than Jean's. They swore they could hear Robert talking back. The imagination of children can be the most powerful in the world. The strange affair was immediately taken as a means for Jean to have an imaginary friend. This, even today, is not so unusual for a lonely boy. After all, a good imagination was healthy. It was not considered a problem until Jean started getting into trouble around the house. Things would break. Buckets would be tipped over. When asked what happened, Jean would confidently claim that Robert did it. Jean's father would discipline the boy when he failed to take blame for his accidents that were clearly his, hoping 
to do his fatherly duty of not raising a habitual liar. Then came the observations and stories from their neighbors. Many times, while the autos were away, people would see the doll peering out windows, move, and change his locations. Some tried to rationalize, claiming that it was Jean. The young boy, however, was never in the house and always with his parents. Others, while visiting in the home, swore that the doll would giggle at them. From out of the corner of their eyes, most thought that they saw Robert running across the room just to turn and see him glaring up at them from another chair. Jean's world would soon turn frightening. Late at night, the autos would be awakened by the chilling screams of their son. Concerned, terrified, and dashing into Jean's bedroom, both parents would find furniture overturned, drinking glasses broken, and Robert at the foot of his bed, blankly glaring off into space. This would happen on a nightly basis and with always the same claim afterwards. Robert did it. Robert did it. After a battle of wheels with their son, Robert the doll was taken away from him and placed in the attic of the house where he remained for years. Life moved on. Gene grew up. As time went by, the horrific encounters with Robert were forgotten and later replaced with the nostalgic memories of a boy and his childhood friend. Jean married and became a respected artist. Later, after the death of both his parents, the family home was willed to him and Jean Otto thought it time to return to his home in Key West. The family home was spacious and just what a successful artist needed for a place of inspiration. Many times, Jean praised the second floor of the home's turret as a perfect place to paint and muse. Cleaning out the home's attic, Jean rediscovered Robert. Overjoyed, Jean had long thought that his parents had thrown the sickly-looking doll out. He shared the discovery with his wife and told her of the many imaginary adventures he had with him. At first, Mrs. Otto accepted the find as a happy treasure and a window into understanding her husband's past. Robert unsettled her. There was a coldness about the doll that Jean's wife could not seem to understand. From the moment Jean returned Robert to the second floor turret room, which had been his childhood bedroom of the past, the autos knew no peace. Jean's painting turned dark. With cold, black button eyes constantly staring up at their owners, Jean's mental connection with Robert was strong. Was the evil voodoo spell still working? Had Jean remembered and knew of the evil magic? In any case, Mrs. Otto had enough. One day, while Jean had been out, she removed Robert from the house. It was her intention to throw the cursed doll out of their lives for good. Jean's reaction was less than understanding. Screaming at the top of his lungs, Jean insisted that Robert be returned to his special chair in his studio. It was Robert's duty to glare at his owner and occasionally glance out the windows at the people of Key West. Without the doll, Jean's life was void of substance. So, after several hours of begging, Mrs. Otto informed Jean of Robert's place of hiding. Hurriedly, Jean ran to the trash heap, picked Robert up, and lovingly took him back into his painting studio. All started to question Gene Otto's sanity. People started to talk. Every town has a haunted house, a sinister edifice which seems to bring out the primal superstitions of the local populace. Q 
Key West was no different in that aspect. The auto house was haunted. School children feared walking past the auto house. Robert, they claimed, would giggle at them. He would mock them. He would change his position and move from window to window. Parents concerned that their children had been victim to an evil prank would constantly report Gene and his doll to the local authorities. Some, brave enough, would confront Gene personally. Gene would always listen, but remain adamant. It's Robert's fault. He would simply whisper. As time went by, Gene became once more terrified of his childhood toy. His work became a victim of his illusions. Gene Otto claimed when he tried to enter the turret room to paint, Robert would be sitting in a rocking chair, glaring up at him and complaining that his accommodations were not satisfactory. Gene would run out of the studio with shaky hands up to his ears, frightened. When asked by his wife what the matter was, she would always hear him say one word in explanation. Robert. One dark night, during a thunderstorm, Gene entered the turret room and removed Robert, sending him back up to his attic. There, Robert would stay for the rest of Gene's life. Even in his terror, he could never bring himself to be rid of the cursed doll. Whatever evil magic had been performed by the disgruntled employee of his father spliced the fates of both doll and man. Robert stayed a haunting memory with Gene Otto until the day of his death. From time to time, guests would claim to hear the footfalls of a child coming from the attic with an occasional giggle. While alive, Gene would simply smile and say, Robert. In 1972, Gene Otto died. It did not take long for his wife to sell their home and she made sure to leave Robert alone in the attic. She never talked of him again. Within time, a new family moved in. They had a 10-year-old daughter. <laughs> After many years of isolation, Robert was once again discovered and loved by the innocence of another child. The parents realized that their daughter's happy discovery was a curse dressed in a cute sailor's suit. The nightmares returned. The furniture started to move, and once more, it was Robert's fault. Robert turned violent. Perhaps it was the knowledge of Jean's passing, realizing that his intended purpose was now over. What was Robert to do now? Alone with strangers, in the only home he had ever known. There was revenge to consider. The child claimed that Robert tried on several occasions to climb up upon her bed at night with the sole purpose of killing her. The new parents broke the door, which never had a lock, pulling the doll from around their daughter's neck. Neighbors had warned them about Robert they would leave believers. Robert would never again live with another family. Key West soon recognized Robert's unique legacy and made him a permanent part of a local museum's exhibit of famous objects. If you have the nerve, you can go see him. He is on display at the Martello Museum holding onto a stuffed lion, also a favorite toy of Jean's, waiting for your attention. But be warned, if you want to take a picture of Robert, according to the museum's staff, you must first ask his permission. Those who don't can come under dire circumstances. From bad film in their camera to an auto accident when they leave the property. On more than one occasion, museum staff members have heard the patter of little feet 
and the sinister giggle of a child. <laughs> if you are ever in Key West, Florida, and you wish to see something both pleasant and horrifying, visit Robert. He has all the time in the world. We come to the end of another strange but true account of the paranormal. If you would like to see some of my personal works, please visit my website at donaldallenkirch.com. It would be an honor to entertain you. My books are available in both digital and print formats. Tune in at a later time when I will share yet another of my fascinating tales. So, for Stranger Than Fiction, this is Donald Allen Kirch wishing you unpleasant dreams. Wanna play? Good night.